MetroTech has helped many young adults obtain their goals of working in the health field with hands-on technology training that's used on the job. And I have with me Tori Wollahan, teacher of health career certification, high school students, and Katie Croy, health careers and practical nursing students. And we've got a lot to cover because this, this whole field of health care, as we were saying a minute ago, is there a large demand for CNAs and LPNs? It's an enormous need. Let's talk about the programs. Uh, Okay, um, so our program is structured. We um, have all schools, Oklahoma City Public Schools. We have Crooked Oak, Aztec Charter School, Santa Fe South. We have many different schools that are in our district. And the students choose to come to us for half their class time. And so they come from their home schools. And during the first year of our program, we actually teach them health career um, exploration. So there's a lot of um, tours, a lot of guest speakers. Um, we teach them some hands-on skills, like introductory skills as far as taking vital signs. They become certified in CPR through American Heart Association. And then um, the following year, the second year, they can come back and they can focus more on some of our nursing programs. And so we have um, a couple different career paths that they can choose. The first one would be AUA and um, nurse aid, and then they can also do um, the new PN Select program that we just started this year, and they can actually start taking curriculum as a high school student to go into the PN program, the LPN program, um, they would finish that program one semester after graduating from high school. So what you have here are a couple of paths mm -hmm. that the students can take, but what I thought was interesting, you mentioned an exploratory time. Mm -hmm. Why is that important? You know, I think that a lot of kids, you know, I know when I was, you know, 16, 17 years old, I just wanted to be a nurse, but I didn't know what all it entailed. And I did actually become a registered nurse, and it was a really eye-opening experience for me because there's a lot of um, challenges in just learning to work with the patients and touch the patients. And so I think getting exposed to that when you're 16 and 17 years old makes a huge difference. And I always tell my students, when you come in, and a lot of them want to be nurses, and some of them, when they leave, you know, they change their mind. But I think it's important to look at all the different health occupations that are out there because there are so many different careers that they don't even know exist. And so what we try to do during that first year is really expose them to the many different careers that are out there so they can make the most informed decision before they go on to college and um, you know waste time or money in a career that they're not meant for. So as a high school student they can get into this process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, it's really fantastic. You know, we have taken, we try to get lots of guest speakers to come into our classrooms, you know, speech therapists and occupational therapists and physical therapists, and then we take them out into some of the big facilities just to get them exposure and to get them a feel for what that particular occupation is like. And so then if they're interested, um, then they can come back that second year and they can choose nurse aid or they can choose um, well, really what we do is we do nurse aid first and then AUA, which is Advanced Unlicensed Assistant, or they can choose the PN Select program. But you start the networking process early right? so that the folks they might end up working with get to know them and, and uh, they can learn in that whole process. Absolutely. A lot of our students, um, even when they go out, especially in the AUA program, a lot of our students that are working in the hospitals, you know, they'll already have jobs before they finish um, the program because they've done so well and the staff has gotten to know them. So it's, it's a really great thing for everybody. Katie, you have gone through mm -hmm. this. And tell us a little about your experience. Well, um, I was a student at Southeast High School, and I'd heard about Metro Tech's program for the nurse aide. Um, and health careers pathway. Um, it sparked my interest with that because my dad had been ill majority of my life and I've always wanted to do something with nursing. Um, and so that's when I began at Metro Tech. Ms. Wallahan was my teacher with the nurse aide. And um, I did really well and exceeded really well with that program. So, yeah. Well, let's expand on that a little bit. Uh, what about the technologically advanced equipment and mm -hmm. and uh, environment that you had to work with. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little about how that was helpful to you. Yes, um, it was great being able to deal with the mannequins um, and then also to, to begin to do clinicals. Um, getting more experience with um, all of the technology um, and going out and doing clinicals and so forth has prepared me to where I am now because um, I'm taking the practical nursing program back here at Metro Tech. 
So you're in the process now, uh -huh. just going up to that uh, to that higher level. Yes. Uh -huh. um, so are are you employed now, or just as a student? Um, I'm working part time right now. I'm working in the medical field. Um, I did nursing assisting for some time after I had graduated. I had obtained my nursing assistance um, by the time I was age of 16. And then after that, um, I proceeded on my next year um, at Metro Tech, did physical therapy aid, and then processed from there. And here I am back for the practical nursing and still continue to do that. So, so. what do you see in your future? What, what are your goals? Um, well, I see myself as becoming a registered nurse, um, advancing my career pathway to hopefully becoming um, a nurse practitioner someday. But Metro Tech has helped me succeed with going in the correct pathway with that. Step, step at a time. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about some of the more technologically advanced mannequins, for example, mm -hmm. for our audience. What does that mean? So in our building, we actually have two separate labs. We have what we call a skills lab and then a simulation lab. And when Katie was in our program, we didn't have the simulation lab. But the simulation lab is equipped with, I think, five beds. And each bed holds a simulator mannequin. And those mannequins can, um, we can measure their blood pressure, their pulse. We can listen to their breathing. Um, we can make them talk. They can make noises. And then we have a couple of different simulators that are more advanced. And so we can actually talk through the mannequins. They can have a voice. They can actually be a patient. And so the PN um, students spend a lot of time in there doing actual scenarios on the simulators. And then for high school students, we're kind of limited. We do some simulations. We definitely do some CPR simulations. We do vital signs. Um, but we spend most of our time in the skills lab. And the skills lab is, in both labs are set up just like a hospital setting with hospital beds. And in the skills lab, we just don't have the simulator mannequins. We have the beds where we actually practice the nurse aid skills. So. We have a lot of technology with those two labs. And one of the things that we do each year, we've done this for several years, we have a day in January. It's called MetroCare Hospital Day. And that's an opportunity for us to use both of those labs. And we actually, um, the whole building turns into a mock hospital. And so all of our programs within that building, they participate in. Um, we have a mass casualty event. Um, we've had different events. Last year, it was a, a bus crash. And this year, it's going to be a tornado um, devastation and so we'll have actual patients that come in they have different scenarios of different injuries and then all the students will actually have different roles that they have to play in order to respond to um, the casualties and to the incident that's happening and I imagine from time to time there's networking with uh, employers to get a feel for what they're expecting mm -hmm. for what they're needing uh, from the students after they're finished absolutely and, you know, I think nursing has changed so much, and the simulators are just so important and crucial because that just that you're able to um, allow these students to practice in a safe setting where they can practice their critical thinking skills and um, really put to practice the things that they're learning is just crucial. So it's been a great thing. Let's talk about the uh, length of training. Now, I noticed that you have tuition. Is, is there just basically one tuition set up or are there several? Well, it's you know dependent on the program that they're going into as an adult, but for high school students, it, there's no tuition. It's just free. Um, and also one fantastic thing that has recently started, um, anybody that's within our district, any high school student in our district can actually come back to one of our adult programs and if they're accepted, they can be in it tuition free. So uh, up until the age of 21. So, Which is covers a number of years. Right. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Let's talk about this shortage of CNAs and LPNs. I know you talk to people all the time. You talk to employers all the time. How, how urgent is this? I think it's very urgent. I think that, you know, we typically think, especially of our elderly population, you know, that needs so much care. But what's really concerning is we have such a large number of individuals with disabilities and developmental disorders. And so, um, you know, I think it's just crucial. There's a, a big need for people to be able to work in the home setting, so home health aides, you know, that's just a, a two-day certification that you can add on to your nurse aid certificate. So um, I just think there's a huge need. And that, uh, uh, are, are, you, are you seeing the folks coming into the program that will help to fill that? 
definitely. And you know, sometimes, you know, even like Katie, we were talking about earlier that, you know, Katie is coming back around 10 years later, mm -hmm. but, and we see that a lot. We see students that, you know, we saw five or 10 years ago and they're kind of coming back. And, and it, the whole point is that when they were 16 or 17 years old, there was something there was, that was planted. There was a seed that was planted and their interest was in health careers and they may do lots of different things. And then the fact that they're coming back around um, is really, it's wonderful to see that. And how long, Tori, have you worked at the Metro Tech? I have been at Metro Tech for 13 years, so quite a while. What brought you there? You know, I was a, a registered, I am a registered nurse, but I worked in the hospital setting, and I really found that I enjoyed just teaching people. And so I thought, well, maybe I'll look for a job in education. And so I, I found the job for Metro Tech, and I didn't quite know what I was getting myself into with teaching high school students, um, but I love it. I just absolutely love the opportunity to get to help young people explore and determine you know what they want to do next and so it's been a very rewarding job for me I never dread going to work it, I just I love it so and it sounds like the infrastructure the technology there and I imagine that continues to change and improve as as, as technology changes absolutely yeah. and there are probably other things on the horizon that uh, are the things you'll be adding new Right. New equipment. Yeah, we're constantly each year we um, we look to see what you know new equipment that we need because we know that um, the students that we're teaching now they they are so technologically advanced and so we definitely have to keep up with that. So and we want to make sure that they're trained on the equipment that they would be using in the facilities and we do have advisory boards. So twice a year we meet with people that work in our industry and we get feedback from them and ask them you know what are the types of equipment that you want our students to be exposed to and to be trained on. So that's how we keep current with what we're using. Uh, that advisory committee is absolutely essential, isn't mm -hmm. it? It is. You've got to see through their eyes where, where the needs are. Right. Let's talk about another way of looking at things. <laughs> Technology now, uh, Internet, mm -hmm. is part of this training uh, available um, over the Internet? You know, we do have, I know in the high school program, we do use, um, I always refer to it as an online textbook, but instead of just your traditional hardback textbook, we do a lot of our learning where it's interactive and not just reading. Um, and then, of course, you know, there are other things that we do. We have, um, at MetroTech, we have an e-learn system, so we can put all of our courses on e-learn. So we use a lot of that technology. Yes, I, just, I was just wondering if the students always have to be parked behind a desk. No. And I know with the PN program, you could probably speak more of what they use yeah. there. But. And, yes. Yeah, and kind of to relate back to everything, we had the mannequins, and now we have the simulators, which the simulator mannequins, and I greatly appreciate that. Um, I learn a lot from that. Um, that's more of the technological advanced uh, things that we have um, gotten. Um, we do also use the e-learn as well, um, but we mainly utilize like the sim labs more than anything. Well, de uh, describe the e-learn. What is the e-learn? Uh, the e-learn is basically the online program where it will show us we have videos on there where we can learn whatever module we're going over at the time. Um, we have also our assignments on there, our readings, um, and so forth that we need to look at to be successful in the program. And isn't that amazing to have those videos mm -hmm. that uh, further impress and, and, mm -hmm. and educate. This this has been delightful. I'm I can't believe we've already <laughs> gone through our time. <laughs> but uh Tori Wallahan, teacher of health career certification, and Katie Croy, student, I thank both of you for being here. And uh, we're gonna learn more about this as time goes along. Thanks for having us. Thank you. You know, our state's ongoing economic growth is tied to students' successful learning experience and bringing those skills into the workplace. That kind of success builds Oklahoma.